it hooks you. It is. It might be addicting. I, I mean, I don't want to get this out, but it might. It might be about as addicting as any drug out there. Because once you ring a cord, you got It's like a Lay's potato chip. You got to have another one. Sometimes. Uh, it gets a little bit emotional. Sometimes you sort of lose the composure. Once I got on stage and the adrenaline started running, I was like, wow, this could really be fun. Hi there, folks. What do you say? Mighty glad to be here today. We have some songs we're gonna sing. And to barbershop chords, we're gonna ring, ring, ring. For the vocal majority, we're a 140-man chorus. Uh, we get together once a week. We're in Dallas, Texas. We get together on a Thursday evening. We all come from different backgrounds, diverse backgrounds, but we all come together for really one common goal, and that's to sing well. It's really the love of singing, and then also the pursuit of excellence. It's pretty much a hobby for all of us, although our wives would probably disagree. But we're not a bunch of professionals. As a matter of fact, we might have uh, three or four professional singers in the whole group. And other than that, it's a bunch of, well, I would say normal guys, but if you get to meet any of them, I don't think normal is an adjective you should use with it. May I have your attention, please? Have an enormous amount of work to do tonight, which means a lot of fun because there'll be a lot of improvement. And that's what this is all about, especially at this point in time. Give your undivided attention tonight to whoever is up here. We're going to start off tonight with a fantastic warm-up, Mr. Jeff Oxley. First chord. Here we go, boys. And First off, let's get everybody balls of their feet. All right, all right. Get there. Chest high, all right? Right up here, boys. That's right. Get those lungs happening. <laughs> Instead of going higher and getting brighter, we need to go, get higher and get broader, all right? So it's ah, ah, ah. Okay, keep that space back here. And then when we go to the four chord, don't press. Let the free sound happen. When it's free, and, and, and it's like it's, it gets easier all of a sudden. You move past that dimension, that tension, it's like where is it? All of a sudden it just kind of clicks in. And that's usually when you're taking it easy a little bit, kind of pulling back. Here we go, back down to there, and ah. Oh. That's it, guys. Yeah. Good. Oh. Right, oh. Yeah. Oh. Man. I mean, coming up here this summer in July, we're getting ready for our international competition, and there's about 130 guys down there that are just chomping at the bit to go to Pittsburgh. Uh, our last international was our sixth international championship, and when you win, you have to sit out three years. So that's three years worth of work, anticipation, excitement, and literally we're competing against groups from all over the world, so the guys are just ready to roll. Can't wait. It's going to be fun. Give me some energy. Come on, guys. Give me some energy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It starts here, man. Jim said it starts at 7 o'clock, right? It starts at warm up. Let's go, all right? Give me the faces. Give me that energy. I know it's just a warm up, all right? It's just a song. It's just a warm up. Gotta have it. One more time, Sonny. Here we go. Burn a hole through that curtain. Burn a hole. Here we go. And. Come on, let me see it, let me see it. Come on, come on, come on, press forward. Come on, come on, come on, let me see it. And that's the attitude. Got to have the same ethic every time. Every time, it's a warm up, whatever it is, give it to us. That's it. All right. Sensations you've never had before. Surround, oh, surround. 
my job is to tell the guys it's okay to show emotion. It's to teach them how to show emotion on the stage. And and uh, the, the category that I deal with is stage presence and to take command and, and make things happen and, and on, uh, energy. And and I love doing that and, and because my job is to get the Start most right out of every guy that they have inside of them. Faces. 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 Spines. Faces there. And right back in. Barbershop is based on synergy or expanded sound, which is the sum is greater than the total of the parts. When you put it all together, you get this single entity of sound that has overtones and undertones and expansion to it if it's really done properly. So it sounds bigger as one single entity than the four voices or the 140 voices that are singing it. Greg was 12 years old when he joined, and of course, now he is like an associate director to me. He is the junior director of the vocal majority. I think I'm the luckiest guy in the world to have had to be able to share this hobby with Greg uh, growing up. Uh, he, we sang together, of course, when he was three years old. And of course, uh, at a very early age, he showed an uncanny ear for harmony and understood it so well. By the time he was, you know, 11 years old, heavens, he was uh, ready to audition and uh, come right in and sing a harmony part, you know, with no problem whatsoever. And it's been great training for him, but the, the fellowship that he and I have had to be able to share your hobby, you know, with your son, it's just been the most rewarding part of it for me. And I sing lead with the with the group, so I have to learn my part. <laughs> so every so often I have to do it on the bus, and I I sing a lot while I drive the bus. My dad has sung barbershop for years and years and years, uh, and I've always kind of admired it from afar, but I always thought it was a bunch of old guys, you know, singing. Uh, I, always, I always loved listening, but I never thought that I would do it. Uh, maybe I didn't have the confidence, I, I don't know. But uh, after I graduated from college, I went and went to one of my dad's rehearsals and actually got, got in with the barbershoppers and sang a few tags, which are endings, end, ends of songs. And there is just something completely magical or mystical about getting together with, with three other guys, singing and locking a chord up, having the overtones and undertones. And uh, 
it literally, it hooks you. I was just determined not to let a little thing like, you know, three and a half thousand miles get in the way of singing with the VM. So I said, David, pick me up at the airport. I'll be there Thursday, OK? So I got a ticket, jumped on a plane. And I was, I was sitting, I had my dinner, watched the film. And I was sitting halfway across the Atlantic. And I'm thinking, what the hell am I doing here on this plane? I, I have no idea what's going to go on to the other end. All I know is that. I just wanted to be with the vocal majority. So wouldn't it be perfect for you and me to be hand in hand, hand in hand, no oh, long now surrender. I got on a plane and, and commuted over the period of about seven months. Just arrived Thursday night, went home Sunday mornings, and I made more than 50% of the rehearsals in that period of time. Singing can do a great deal for individuals. Um, being in something that gets synergistic or that, that really rings or that sounds bigger than it is, it's, I hate to use the analogy, but it, it is almost spiritual or holy. It's something, it's like, there's more than the four of you standing there singing this thing. Okay, we are the acoustics from Dallas, Texas, of course, and got together in 1990. All four of us are members of the, the VM, the That's vocal right. majority, and love being in the chorus and do the chorus thing and a quartet thing. Both you know, of them, yeah. It's do everything. It's big on some weekends singing with the chorus, some weekends no, with a lot the quartet. I myself, if I were to try to compete with a quartet, would fall flat on my face because I can't sing that well. I can hear pitch, I can sing in tune, but do I have the voice to go out and win a championship on a quartet? No, I don't. 
but barber shopping goes way beyond that. Um, it lets people, the chorus part of barber shopping especially, lets people with very average voices become part of something that's very, very good. The philosophy basically of the vocal majority is hard work is fun when improvement is evident. So the more improvement we feel, the more fun we're having. You select an uptune, which is kind of a rah-rah thing, and, and, and a ballad, which is, is a tearjerker. And this year we're doing a, an uptune called Running Wild. Uh, our ballad is the, that wonderful mother of mine, and if it doesn't bring some tears to you, it darn sure brings some tears to us. There's never been a problem for me being able to get into that song, but through my mother's illness of cancer, uh, it really, the song, at first was very difficult to sing. At first was extremely difficult to sing, because obviously it brought up the memory of my mother in her, in her uh, insidious illness, and uh, what an awful thing. But it redefined itself as my mother did. Uh, what a prideful lady she was. It was a very remorseful song at the beginning, but now that wonderful mother of mine signifies my mom and signifies the respect and the pride I feel for her. And uh, after losing her just a few weeks ago, about 10 days ago, I'm able to sing that with joy and to sing that with a new kind of inspiration. Being part of a men's organization of Barbershop Harmony, most women that are not in it would probably think, my husband's hobby is singing in a barbershop chorus. But it's not a hobby to the man. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of life. It's a way of expressing and giving themselves far beyond what they think they're capable of. And I'll tell you, fellas, you keep me thinking, and you keep me on my toes, and you keep me thinking young, and I hope acting and hopefully looking young. <laughs> so, anyway. One out of three ain't bad. There are some excellent choruses, and we don't take anything for granted. We've been working on this package, these two songs, for over a year. And bearing in mind the amount of man hours that, you know, it's 100,000 man hours or something like that that goes into two songs for six minutes. Uh, probably, I, in my mind, I think the, the chorus we have to watch is from Northbrook. Uh, we've heard a lot about them. They've got a very talented director, Jay Gilombardo. Wear the smile. 
about six or seven top-notch choruses that are right up there. They've all got, you know, 120, 140 guys, and they're the choruses we have to watch out for. But, you know, we're taking nothing for granted this time. We uh, lost a contest back in 1978, and it happened to be a real blessing in disguise for this chorus. In the first place, we didn't exactly lose. We did finish second. And my son Greg said something once that makes me very proud. He said, I'm just as proud of that second place medal as I am any gold, because I worked just as hard for it. Jim is one of those directors who I think he gives a lot to us, and he expects a lot in return. Uh, it, it, what's uh, one of the real nice things of, about singing for Jim is that he, I think he probably has eye contact with every single guy in the chorus. How do you keep the music? How do you keep the music playing? A question, of course, here we go, ready, and no sing, lip sync. There's always one. Singing for Jim Clancy, how can, I, how can I put that into words? It's truly an inspiration. Um, I literally moved from Ohio after college 10 years ago uh, for the sole purpose of singing with the vocal majority and making my life in music down here in Dallas. That's the idea. Get into it. I'm watching you as much as I'm listening to you, fellas. If Beethoven were directing you, he'd have to, wouldn't he? He'd just have to judge by what he sees you do. Like, gosh, are they singing well? Are they singing beautifully, you know? Wouldn't he? Wouldn't he, really? He'd have to watch. He'd, oh, God, I can't hear. But I can hear because I can see what they're doing. So pretend Beethoven's directing. Here we go. Pitch again. Here we go. Ready? I know. Let me tell how well you're singing by how you look. Fair enough? Here we go. I, I know. Gotta show us like like you had never thought of this before, but like what if something did happen? Could I even cope? Could I handle it if I lost you? In your eyes. I may not see forever. What if that happened? What he's really doing, he's really bringing the best person out instead of just the singing. It, he's bringing the, the best heart, the best feelings, uh, just literally. Um, making you be the best that you can possibly be at that particular instant on the risers. Let's do it now. I mean, lock in, do your thing. Lock into that groove. And let's get on up to that other level where we operate so well. You always sing your absolute best after the most silence I ever hear you. Here we go. Ready and. How do you keep the music playing? Cut with me. becomes more stressful than I would choose it to because of the pressures and I feel like each year maybe that is increased but the advantages far outweigh those pressures when I see what it does for other people and how the bonding how it brings them together it is worth you know 
all of that at home that, that we need to go through. We can be the best of lovers, yet be the best of friends and try every way to make it better. Always, every day, hey, just maybe keep this music going forever. Back when I was having my problems, I wouldn't feel like going to rehearsal. You know, just because of everything weighing down on me, my wife would say, you need to go to rehearsal. My oldest son, Dad, you need to go to rehearsal. But they knew why I needed to go to rehearsal. And the reason is, you can't sing and be mad, angry, or sad at the same time. You can't do it. Sometimes I come into rehearsal in a bad attitude. As soon as I get started and we get singing, what was I angry about? What, what was all that about? It, it doesn't exist anymore. It's a lot, it's a lot of fun for me. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's in England or Japan or Russia or the United States. It's, we, we all share that, that same love of, of singing and four-part harmony. Around the rest of the world, uh, this has really grown in the last 10 years, I would say, have sprung up very similar brother organizations. Uh, we have DABS, which is the Dutch Association of Barbershop Singers. We have IABS, which is the Irish Association of Barbershop Singers. Uh, we have SNOBS, which is the Society of Nordic Barbershop Singers. That, that's the Swedes, actually. There is a really good group in Germany called Bing, Big B, Little I, and Big G, Barbershop in Germany. But my favorite is called Spanets, and that's the southern part of Africa, tonsorial singers. And, <laughs> and that, that's a real organization, and the Barbershop singers in South Africa. My first experience with meeting American singers, um, you know, we sang all the same songs and really enjoyed it. And we kind of speak funny different languages, but we sing the same, which is remarkable. And what I found out at that time was that the American society, which actually is 40,000 singers, blew my mind. Um, and, and he said, I said, what's the name of your society? He said, it's called... <laughs> It's called the Society, it's called S-P-E-B-S-Q-S-A, which is the Society for the Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing in America, incorporated. I went, wow. <laughs> we are standing in the Heritage Hall Museum of Barbershop Harmony here in Kenosha, Wisconsin. In here we have our beautiful uh, replica barber shop uh, from the turn of the century. Now the reason we have this is because it answers the question, why do they call it barber shop harmony? Well, in the late 1800s, uh, a barber shop was a gathering place for the men in the city. A man who came down to the shop every day would be shaved, and while he was waiting his turn, uh, they would talk over the news of the day, and they'd also do a little bit of impromptu harmonizing. They'd take a familiar song they knew, uh, one man would sing the melody, and a couple other guys would join in and just harmonize naturally. Very simple harmonies that flow naturally from the song. From that point, of course, it's expanded tremendously, and today thousands, hundreds of thousands of people enjoy it every year around the world. Four of us 
just realized where we got our roots. And it was right in good old barbershop harmony. Let's hear it for barbershop. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, there is another generation, and we would like to introduce them at this time to the greatest audiences in the world, the barbershop audiences, the Osmond Boys, second generation. Yeah. And we've all had the quarrels and parted. We'll be the same as we started. Just a traveling along, singing a song. Side, side by, by side, we're side by side. A barber shopper can come from any walk of life. In the Northbrook chapter, there are people from 12 years old to in their 80s who have done anything and are doing anything, and most of them, I don't know what they do, but they are bonded together by this common love of barbershop harmony. And that seems to transcend all age barriers and all ethnic barriers and all economic barriers. And if a guy can sing, I want him standing beside me singing barbershop. This kind of see is we get lost in the music, which is wonderful. You sing well, but you get lost and we lose, you almost internalize there, and you shouldn't. You need to still share that with the audience, okay? So I'm asking you from the time you're humming and through you're doing there, please stay involved and don't internalize, stay out with the audience so that we capture that hunger that we're looking for. In the last couple of months, I've really started running a lot. Uh, trying to encourage the guys to make sure and get a lot of exercise. And one of the things I like about rehearsing as often as we do during this particular time period is try to get themselves in shape. And rehearsing this often starts building their endurance and their stamina. Yeah, exercise is, is really critical to our performance. Uh, and the reason is, is it's, it's not as if we are standing up there on the backs of our heels and singing and, and trying to sound pretty. That's, that's not it. Uh, you need to keep a lot of energy up into your chest, and that means that your legs need to be in shape. Your, your breast support needs to be at a maximum level. Uh, the more that you're in shape, the more it's going to help you uh, on the performance stage. No doubt about it. Uh, we talk about doing walking programs, running programs, something to increase your stamina, uh, make you stronger. And I think it's got to, just like exercise normally, it helps you uh, physically, mentally. You're kind of on top of your game. You got to start getting in shape now. It's vital for the contest stage. For us to be at our, at our peak level, we need to be working out. So look at this physique. <laughs> My story is, is, is one of, of uh, sheer pride, I think. Uh, five years ago, I fell into the Dallas City Dump. Uh, nasty place. Six weeks later, I walked out of the hospital, six foot one on one side and 4'11 on the other. They amputated my knee, or my leg, six inches below the knee. Uh, they amputated twice. I went through a series of nine operations. These guys were with me every day. Uh, there were 900 visitors to that hospital room in six, in six weeks, and virtually every one of them was a barbershopper. As a support group, and, and, and I may, perhaps this is irreverent, but they supported me far better than my church did. They fed my wife and children. Uh, I was without work. They provided finances to, to keep us going. Uh, it's a debt I'll never repay, ever. Uh, and, and I'll sing for them until I die, just trying, just trying to get even. Uh, they're wonderful. absolute family. Just love every one of them. There's not a guy in that chorus 
that I can't look at and feel a genuine, uh, strong attachment with. You know, it's just, they're like brothers to me. When I'm singing, it's a total focus. I'm not thinking about my job. I'm not thinking about my wife. Sorry, dear. Uh, I'm really thinking about the task at hand and uh, giving that focus and just getting everything out of my brain and pumping it right through my voice is just a great high. When it's dark days on the Delta, that's the time my heart is light. When it's dark days on the Delta, let me linger in the shelter of the night. Fields of cotton. Lounging on the levee, listen to the nightingale. Up and bomb, laughter on the levee, no one's heart is heavy. All God's children got someone to love. When it's dark, dead, it's on the delta. is that there are so many families, fathers and sons and grandfathers that enjoy this hobby together and it is nothing like getting together with your family and harmonizing and we get together about once a year and sing some of the songs that I sang when I was about three or four years old and it's nothing like it. Am I, what am I going to take? Two. Take two. The reason that I can, you know, play the instrument that I can play and, and sing the way that I can sing is because from the age of two I was doing harmony with my parents and, and stuff like that. So it's just been, I mean, my whole life. The reason I'm in music right now is because of barbershop as a kid. So it's, um, I guess I owe everything to it, you know. The beauty about, about this art form, and maybe it's just singing in general, you know, rarely do you find a jerk that likes to sing. Bunch of guys with a chain round their neck and those big bloodshot eyes. There never was a crowd like that crowd I knew. We all got drunk and loud and we woke up tattooed. I wish I could meet them, but they're doing time. For there never was a gang like mine. 
I'm Larry Gans. I'm an ophthalmologist in St. Louis in private practice. I'm a sales manager for a food manufacturing company. And I'm a sales estimator and a project manager for an interior construction company. Well, my name is Tom Higley. I sell Yellow Page advertising. It's probably the greatest hobby in the world. It's an opportunity to see and be and do. It's an opportunity to sing. It's an opportunity to, to psychologically get a huge release. Uh, it's an opportunity to be it's an opportunity to be the best in the world at something. And, and not very many men have that, that opportunity. I think that the vocal majority is, is a wonderfully creative outlet for my father. It, it allows him to express himself emotionally and spiritually and passionately, maybe the way men can't really express themselves in this day and time. Once you've done the show, you know, the guys on the stage, we work hard, we rehearse, we do the show. After the show's finished, we just want to throw off our tuxedos, get into our sweats, go into the bar, have a few beers, and just let it loose. You know, we, we want to sing some tags, just have a good time. Sunshine So as we get better, so does the competition. If we stop improving, uh, they'll catch up with us, and that'll be the end of the little string, I'm sure. So we have to get better. Uh, wonderful, musically-led chorus um, we'll be competing against from Northbrook, Illinois, directed by a fellow by the name of J.G. Lombardo. Beautiful arranger, a wonderful musician, guy with a heart, and his chorus reflects that. It's, it, it'll be close, it just will. strongest, you know, most uh, quiet person just in every day, you know, you know him as, oh yeah, he's pretty strong, quiet, calm, you don't really notice him uh, that much, but then you see him on stage and he's just completely different. I mean, people turn, you see the other side of everybody and it's, I mean, there's nothing more gentle than seeing that side of a very strong person. that look in their eyes when they sing a ballad, you know, and, and just get so excited and just see the, the emotion in them, in these strong men, you know, it, that's, it's just incredible.
if we didn't win the contest, I would uh, maybe feel a little bit of self-doubt. Uh, but I would also think that somebody probably worked harder or more passionately than we did. It's an inner game, and you're competing against yourself. And, and that's one of the beauties of it, is that, that you are always trying to make yourself better. Bring yourself to the next level. I've got two important questions to ask. <laughs> If we ended up with second place, I would, I would probably be devastated because it's not as good as what the chorus is. And so, as a result, maybe I didn't bring the chorus to the level they should have been. The fact that we lost in, in Cincinnati in 78 has probably been the greatest blessing the vocal majority has ever received. I remember that night in a hospitality room we sang a song, a Jimmy Webb song called Didn't We Almost Make It This Time. And uh, it's hard for me to talk about. I mean, because <clears throat> I still remember. I remember how the guys looked. Remember the, the looks, and they're, they're singing, and they're choking on the words. You know, I'm seeing the tears. And at that point, I promised myself, I've been misquoted on this before, but I remember thinking, I promised myself that whatever it took, that so long as I'm the director of this chorus from this point on, we will never again finish second. Got to do what would have been a 12 Saturday. Here we go. Let's so see those faces. I'm not worried about the chorus anymore. I'm just concerned with you, just you and me, because that's what this is about. We're in the 90s. We're in the 90s. Let's go to 100. Here we go. Her and. My mom will be there. She was always have a younger brother, Justin, younger sister, Holly. They're all involved in music. And she always complained about not being able to see all the performances. What a great lover of music my mom was. Uh, and we're not going to have to worry about that anymore because she truly will be in Pittsburgh and she'll be with Justin and she'll be with Holly in every performance. And we truly, uh, her soul shall live on forever, as the, as the song says. And I'm looking forward to Pittsburgh because it'll be a tribute, my special little tribute to her. There's so much love emanating in that room. They've been through so We don't know all the stories of their lives. I wish there were time. I wish we had more time in a day, in a year, to really talk to the men and know their stories and know the pain and the heartaches and the things they've gone through. But as human beings, you know all the time everyone has their own problems and their own trials that they go through. So you see that coming out when they're singing. And that's what just brings you this connection. You don't even have to really know. You just feel the connection. And I grew up uh, <clears throat> knowing right from wrong and uh, with a very upstanding family. And uh, have very strong kids and have taught them right from wrong. Have a wife that's absolutely wonderful. <clears throat> anyway, because I didn't handle business right in a couple of situations, I had been through a year of interrogation and, and, uh, and I knew it was coming to a head. And I also knew that at some point in time I had to tell the chorus. I was going to be sentenced before we went to New Orleans. And uh, so <clears throat> the guys worked harder than I've ever seen them work. And, uh, and I received a sentence. And I spent 13 months in prison, away from my family. And 
and, and away from the course. But <clears throat> what made it so wonderful, I guess, is the fact that I think that everyone, I think everyone around me gained something from it. Before I left, Urban Rogers, I think, who has the twins that are in the chorus, the young boys, had a party for me before I went to prison. Only that would happen in the vocal majority. And my wife and I went over there, and I don't know how many guys were there, but I came to the door and they said, you know, you're going to miss some holidays. So we thought we'd go ahead and have them. And uh, there was one room set up for Thanksgiving with full Thanksgiving dinner. There was a room set up for Christmas, a room set up for, for New Year's. And all of them decorated differently with different kinds of food. And, and it was a celebration that I was going to miss. And uh, it was very, very special. They had to sit down, and then they turned to my wife. And they said, we know what times are going to be tough, and uh, this is for you. <clears throat> and it was a card from the chorus, <clears throat> and they'd passed the hat. And I don't know how much money was in there, $1,400, $1,500. They gave to my wife to help her make it. You know, and where else in the world is there a group of guys like that? I don't know. I just don't think there is. And, you know, they checked on her all the time I was gone. But the other thing is, um, three of the guys came to see me on a regular basis. I received 900 letters in that 13 months of support and keeping me going. I probably wrote 700 letters during that period of time. I received four boxes of books to read, and they never failed. They never stepped aside from me.
But there's a little spot in Pennsylvania That's a place I long to go Where the old Allegheny and Monongahela Join hands with the Ohio Then I think of the good old smoky city That's what it used to be Now the sun, it shines all day On our beautiful gateway It's wonderful It's marvelous Now, it's Pittsburgh tension in the room, you can feel the tension build. Uh, these guys, each and every one of them, feels that they need to be the very best singer on that spot, on that riser, on that day. And they'll work toward it. It's, uh, it's really a kick.
Well, we're down here with the Big Apple Chorus. Um, to participate in a chorus contest, it's got about 23 choruses in it. And the thing that we're really here to do is to bring some of New York into the contest. You know, we have, we have a lot of assets up in New York that a lot of the other cities don't. We have Broadway, we have a lot of theater, we have Carnegie Hall, we've got that, and we've got that attitude that New York has, a little bit of that in-your-face thing. And that's something that we bring to Barbershop that really no other chorus brings to it, is that get out and get in their face a little bit and show them something they haven't seen before. about barbershop is that, that it's music that, that the common man can sing and enjoy and really get a lot of reward out of. It's fairly simple music. It's music from the heart, you know, and, it, and it's music that just requires a, a, an ear to harmonize and a, and a love of the harmony and the, excuse me, I'm sorry. Can they take it down a little? I'm, I'm feeling like I'm having to yell. Two, one, two, three, F. Happy feet, I got those happy feet. Give them all around me, they make me dancing. Boy, I got those ten little happy toes. And when they hear a tune, I can control my happy feet to save my soul. Those blues can't get into my shoes because my shoes refuse to ever grow. I would love to win, but there's a lot of choruses, a whole lot of choruses, a whole lot of choruses who's been rehearsing for this a lot longer than we have. I have high hopes. To be honest, we only had 38 days to prepare for this, which is about eight rehearsals, and I don't expect to win, but I expect to upset a lot of choruses. <laughs> In, the, in this middle area, okay? Let's just have a 10 minute meeting with your section mate. For these next six or seven minutes, guys, when we sing this, they're going to go by like lightning. It's going to be over before you know it. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. You guys are great. You know what kills people too? You ever see people go like this? What they, you know? What gets you real bad is when you're sitting on a bus and you give them one of these from underneath. <laughs> 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 
Well, at the convention uh, this year, I'm an MC. Sometimes I'm singing on stage in a contest. Sometimes I'm directing a chorus in a contest. But today, I'm the MC. In a couple minutes, I'm going to put on this coat. I'm going to walk down this hallway, step to the wings, get my cue, and step on the stage, and away we go. You've never heard choruses like are going to be singing out there today. The greatest male singing choruses in the world will be there today. And now, representing the Illinois District from the North Brook, Illinois chapter, please welcome the new tradition! you don't have your watches, chains, rings, anything you're not supposed to have. Wedding bands only. Just take your bags with you. We will not be coming back to this room. Chuck said it more than anything else. Have fun. Think of the thrill that you have the privilege of giving 10,000 people out there. Have total confidence in yourself. You are not a follower. You are a leader. You are the star of this course. And I've never been so sincere about anything as I am when I say that. You are the star of this course, my friend. So you do it. You do your job. Continue to set the example, just like you've been doing for the last few days. Set the example for everybody else. And this will be the greatest thing anybody's ever witnessed. What? Apprentice. Yes, sir. Prayer, please. Oh, God, in your love we're rich. In your hands we're strong. In your favor we're blessed. In your spirit we're always at home. There is nothing we lack when we're with you. We dedicate all our gifts and our lives to the greatest performance of our lives and to your name's honor and glory. In your name, amen. amen. One more time, Sonny. Here we go. All right, we're going to tell them a story they won't forget. Here we go. And Once I had a hard, hard again.
I'm nervous, <laughs> waiting for the results, and um, I just hope that we did it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your third place international medalists are from Alexandria, Virginia. Here is your second place international medalists. They are from Northbrook, Illinois, the new tradition. And now, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the new international champion chorus from Dallas, Texas. Music builds you from inside also, the individual, the inner self. Um, probably the one thing that helped me while I was in prison, I had to walk about a mile up to a job that I had. And I walked this road alone. And the way I made it up there and what really would lift me up that day and kind of get my mind out of the pits, which it stayed there a lot, was I sang one song on the way up there, sang it softly, but it's a song the chorus does, and it's called I Walk With God. And that song gave me the strength to make that day, every day, and I did not miss one day singing that song on that road. And it would build me up and make me feel so good about myself and everyone around me that I could make that day until the next day when I'd sing that song again. And I think anyone that's down or having problems, there's some special song in your life that has some meaning. And you might go into a closet to sing it, but sing it to yourself and listen to it. And listen to the beauty of it, and you'll feel better. This is the moment. This is the time. When the momentum, when the moment are in rhyme, give me this moment, this moment is moment. I'll gather up my past, make some sense at last. This is the moment, my final test. Destiny beckoned, I never reckoned, second best. This is the day, just see it shine. When all I've lived for becomes more. <clears throat> This is the moment, this is the hour, when I get open of tomorrow like a flower, and put my hand to everything that I plan to, fulfill my grand design, see all my stars alive.
from every distant shore, but what matters more is we're Americans. United by the promises beneath the flag. 